Greetings, everyone. Welcome to this Drobo webcast, where we will be talking about some new breakthroughs in our storage capabilities with specific support for solid state drive technology and automated data wear tiering, some great things that allow us to introduce to you SSDs for SMBs. My name is Mario Blandini here at Drobo. I'm our VP of Technology Solutions. Excited to talk to you for a couple minutes today about this technology, which will be available for our Drobo Model B1200i starting on April 25th. Now, Drobo is different. And uh, if you're familiar with Drobo, you know that all it takes is basic knowledge of traffic signals to operate a Drobo. And more than 200,000 customers already know and have chosen Drobo for its innovative ease of use and expandability. It's what makes Drobo different and how we're expanding on those technologies will allow us to provide these new capabilities like automated data wear tiering in a way that makes it super simple. That's really what makes Drobo different. And I want you to just keep that in mind as I go through today's presentation because it's building on the uh, success and innovation that Drobo has been delivering here for the past several years. And of those 200,000 customers, 25,000 of them are already business customers with eight bay or larger systems from Drobo and we are making them even better. So you know it's a Drobo if you can do things like mix and match the drives, if you don't have to worry about setting RAID levels. Basically, if you wanna save time, that's what Drobo allows you to do from a storage perspective. And for most small and medium business IT persons, myself, I was in IT for more than a decade, I never seem to have enough time to do all the projects. In my life today, time's probably the most scarce resource uh, that I have, and maybe you're the same way. So having technology that saves you time in doing some of these things that really aren't that much fun. I mean, if you, if you like to tinker around with technology, most people grow to love how easy it is to use and how automated it makes things. So you save some time. Time is money, but in a lot of cases, you also save money in cases like being able to mix and match drives and drive the lowest possible price. Now, uh, with automated thin provisioning and thin reclamation, there's some great uh, savings to be had there as well. And we're expanding Drobo's technology with uh, support for this new automated data wear tiering capability, which we'll talk about today. If I were to uh, recap Drobo B1200i as a product, it's been available for the past six months or so. And we've had several hundred customers already deploy the product, uh, looking at how they're doing it. It would break down to where uh, more than half of them are virtualizing, VMware being the most common uh, virtualization that they are doing. But a, a fair number of folks using Windows physical servers as well and new in the 1.1.0 software release, which goes with this 425 automated data wear tiering launch, is support for Windows Server 2008 R2 clustering as well as Hyper-V live migration. So those are new things that will uh, make it even better for folks in a Windows environment who want to use the product. We've got a fair number of folks using Linux, which is also supported. The net being that there are a lot of customers today without the acceleration of SSDs already enjoying the benefits of Drobo for its beyond raid technology and its thin provisioning. What you get with the SSDs is uh, acceleration for your transactional applications. And that'll be the focus of most of our discussion here. Now, uh, I don't anticipate that using SSDs in a Drobo is going to fundamentally change the way folks deploy the product. One of the most popular use cases, in fact, the most popular for this particular product is offloading your existing SAN that you might have, EMC, HP, or other, and taking some of the applications which are very high capacity and moving those to a Drobo because they may not have the same performance or availability requirements as the tier one application, so to speak. So there's a lot of folks looking at that. It's one of the reasons why a lot of people say, my other SAN is a Drobo. <laughs> they have a large scale name brand storage device for their tier one storage, but uh, most of their everyday driving that they do would be done on a product like a Drobo. So I'll talk a little bit about that and how the new launch on April 25th with automated data where tiering is going to help out in those particular use cases. So uh, as a very quick recap, we have all the same capabilities of Beyond RAID and those features that you know and love about Drobo in a 12-bay form factor, which has uh, a modular architecture allowing you to keep a spares kit on site, a fru kit for doing field replacement there, uh, as well as a unique support for different drive technologies in the Drobo B1200i, SATA and SAS, as well as SSD. 
let's uh, dive into the specifics. I have already talked about how no IT person's required. And this isn't meant to say you're gonna be out of a job if you're an IT guy. It's that if you could spend your time doing other stuff, wouldn't you want to? Uh, we expect that the answer is yes. And particularly for some of the areas of your infrastructure where you don't really wanna spend some time, you just want it to work and be easy. The technology from Drobo helps you out there and carrying on in the same tradition of beyond rate and thin provisioning, we deliver automated tiering at no additional cost for the software. It's built in to the product. Uh, we create a transactional tier by implementing as few as two, but with dual disk redundancy, implementing three SSDs into the system, and that creates a system with automated tiering. It's really the most practical way a smaller organization can use SSDs, if you think about it, because pooling enough of them to get enough capacity to be meaningful for any one application can be hard. You need to buy a lot of them. Or if you deploy them in just one particular volume of one application, you may or may not uh, be able to get any acceleration because you likely need it across several volumes that couldn't fit just on uh, a RAID group of SSDs. And of course, you could put it into the local drive of your server, but most folks don't have their production data transactionally in that particular type of deployment. So having it in a shared way that provides benefit across all the volumes on a system really is what makes it no IT required because Drobo is not the first company to deliver tiering technology. It's a technology that's been around for a while, but we're the first ones to revolutionize how it's done in a single storage pool. And we're doing so in a way that is affordable enough that it can be used by the smaller organization to take advantage of the benefits of having a storage that's both optimized for capacity and optimized for good performance. So with that, uh, let's go into some of the more specifics. What is Drobo's automated dataware tiering. Uh, it's a breakthrough and in an industry first in the sense that it's the only fully automated system. Now, everybody says easy, everybody says automated. So how do you break that down and understand how it's different from a Drobo perspective? We say automatically, and we're including the, the term immediately as well, because you can envision that as data comes to the system, Drobo has already in our existing products and on the B1200i prior to SSDs, characterize the data coming into a Drobo. Understanding what that data is, we make decisions to intelligently place that data on the storage pool, and we keep track of how much there is of it through our capacity gauge on the system. Expanding upon that level of intelligence, we can do even more to intelligently place the data such that smaller transactionally oriented write IOs can and do go directly to the SSDs. With that, you all have acceleration there without any of the classic tiering technology where you characterize performance and promote data and based on its usage patterns. It turns out that Drobo does that too, and we provide similar types of read acceleration with the promotion of data based on its temperature profile or on its access patterns. But the net is that with just a small number of SSDs, I mentioned throw three of them in there and we're showing a picture of the SSD that uh, Drobo happens to use in our drive bundles, the OCZ Talos drive, a three and a half inch form factor SSD. We use the 200 gig version. Throw as few as two or three, depending on how you have the system configured, and you now have a transactional tier. Create it automatically and accelerating applications automatically, either write or read without any sort of configuration. And the, what makes that really powerful is all of the volumes in your B1200i get the benefits of this acceleration. There's no need to pick and choose which volumes are faster based on where you create them and where you mount them from. It is everything on the system and the system does its job to make it very easy for you and do the optimization. So it is, as we described, the easiest and most affordable way for an SMB to enjoy the value of SSDs. And we're hoping that you find very much the same thing now I'm going to give you a little bit more explanation on how it works. I've described it already at a high level, but with the aid of this picture, as a server or a host sends data to its volume, the smart volume created on the Drobo, we place that data onto the storage pool and we are making decisions to place it intelligently in an area that provides a better level of service. So the red blocks, so to speak, are IOs coming to the system that meet a certain 
characteristic, think 32K or smaller on a right IO, rather than have them go to the bulk parking lot. And think of it like a, a sporting event. Uh, maybe you, there's a, a large crowd coming to a concert or an event. The parking lot that's very near the event typically has a premium price. It's much smaller than the lots that you'd see further out because fewer people park there because of the premium. And then you've got the bulk parking lot where everybody goes for the lowest cost and maybe you have to walk real far or even take a bus to get to wherever the event is. Well, typical traditional systems would require all IOs to go to the bulk tier and then they get promoted based on their access pattern. I talked about how Drobo also does that, but being able to characterize and immediately route IOs based on the nature of the data really is part of this automatic operations without any user configuration or provisioning. The volumes created on the Drobo, where the data gets intelligently placed is based on the nature of the data. And what's really helpful here is if your data patterns change, it's really hard to forecast and model those sort of things. So you're protected from those things happening. There's no need to reconfigure or move things around. Drobo is going to automatically accelerate everything based on the nature of the traffic. So that is a positive thing on how it works and what makes it such a huge breakthrough. In terms of what it's doing in the background, things like hot and cold temperature measurements are taken into consideration as we move data either from the transactional tier because it's not maintaining a certain access pattern or promoting data from the bulk tier to the transactional tier because of it's having a high access pattern. So regardless of your application mix, uh, you could have a largely capacity-based application that dumps very large files to a volume. And normally it would never touch uh, the SSDs, but once a month you might run some reports and do a lot of uh, small random reads to that stored data on a regular basis. And uh, if it does it regularly, it would recognize that uh, as becoming higher in temperature and higher in access pattern and promote that to the transactional tier so you can increase the level of performance you have. This is all done without any user configuration whatsoever. So that's a great way on how it works. In terms of that tuning, taking it to the next level, we do move those things around and it does make that a, a breakthrough. This gives you just a more granular view of how that would work. And the typical configuration of a Drobo will be six or nine, two terabyte SAS drives optimized for capacity. So you get the capacity you need in a system and two or three SSDs, which give you the performance that you need using this automated data aware tiering. So with a few SSDs, you can get that great benefit. And part of what makes it different and better is that it is automated and immediate. Certainly it's application independence makes it unique as well, because you don't have to choose which applications get the fast volumes. You also don't have to choose policies on how the volumes are accelerated in the system. Uh, it's all built in and as things change, we can adapt to that on the fly because it's done at a block level independent of any applications. Also cost is certainly a relative thing. And this is very unique because the types of systems that would offer this type of capability, not in the way that Drobo does it, but to offer tiering. I mentioned earlier that uh, we're not unique. We're not the first ones to invent it, but there are other uh, vendors out there that do it. It's typically in a price range, uh, 50,000 US dollars and higher where the Drobo solution in this case offers both capacity and performance in a package under 20,000 US dollars. I could go on probably for a, a good two hours going into the very specific points of how Drobo's automated data where tiering technology works. If you were looking for some more information, I invite you to check out our white paper that's available online at info.drobo.com slash ebook, which gives you a whole chapter on exactly how the technology works. I'll also give you some information on how you can attend live demos or ask live chat questions with us anytime. Another way to get some more detailed information on exactly how that works. But I wanted to go ahead and net out for you what the value is and how you would apply that to your environment because most folks don't go looking for storage for the sake of storage. It's supporting an application or project in their environment. When it comes to tiering, what you get are improved service levels. You may choose to start with a Drobo B1200i with only hard drives because that matches your requirements for the time being. And as you continue to grow, you might have transactional applications that also grow in their need for higher IOs. And in that case, you can accelerate those transactional applications by adding SSDs to the tune of doubling the IO performance of the product. 
So you can get that unique balance of price and performance. In a uh, historic context, you can achieve much of the same thing by pooling enough of a population of 15,000 RPM SAS drives. Uh, and it's quite common in typical benchmarking type things to read that you can get very high IOPS from those sort of configurations, but it's only through the deliberate pooling of a very large number of those drives. That doesn't give you the best capacity to price ratio. So in the way Drobo's designed this product, you have great price capacity along with good IO performance through the acceleration with the SSDs. As few as three of them in a dual disk redundancy mode will give that to you. And the time savings associated with not having to manage any of this stuff really is of a big impact that contributes to the overall price. It's in an all-in-one system. You don't have to buy additional systems. That certainly saves you money as well, in addition to having the low-cost entry system itself. So let's do a, a couple of comparisons. I, I said before, you can accomplish many of the same things, at least from a capacity and performance perspective, using classic technology or 20th century RAID technology. And here's a product that we're comparing to. When folks think of Drobo, they often draw a parallel to larger scale enterprise or mid-range products. In the case of this direct comparison with Dell, the products under the Equalogic and Compellent lines have a lot of modern, valuable features in them like a Drobo, but Drobo compares, at least from a cost and a sizing perspective, more to a PowerVault product. And those are the ones that we're showing here. Great product, it's just a classic RAID product. It doesn't have the capabilities of Beyond RAID to instantly expand and to automatically manage the storage. It doesn't offer thin provisioning and thin reclamation for efficient use of the storage either. And in the case of the tiering here, you could create a solution that has a large enough number of SAS drives and SATA drives combined together to give you the capacity and the performance, but it's all manual configuration. If you want an application to go faster, you have to manually configure it and provision it and deploy it onto a volume from your 15K SAS drives here. And that is something that folks have been doing for a long time. I have the joy of talking to a lot of customers that are looking for ways to avoid spending time doing that. So they really love the idea of a Drobo. We can not only save you 27% on the MSRP, it also comes with the automation that makes that much easier. And to take that same direct comparison a little bit further, you could get all the same capacity and have performance across the board. Really eliminate the need to have SSDs with enough 15K SAS drives. But you start to see that it adds up at twice the cost and three times the physical footprint. It doesn't make a lot of sense to go about solving that challenge in that way. And that's why Drobo has been innovating with the new capabilities, specifically with this tiering solution and SSDs to give you the benefits that you would have from a price and a performance perspective using classic technology for a lower price using more efficient means. And in our case, using SSDs to provide you that acceleration. A small bit of them is all you need to improve the performance of all the volumes. I have a similar slide here where compared to HP, another very popular product for the SMB space. The uh, P2000 doesn't compare necessarily from a capabilities perspective where it'd be more in the same discussions as the left-hand P4000 or the three-part product, especially with the thin provisioning that is involved with that. But you can find configurations in the case of a Drobo that also still have a savings against the other base configurations with all the same benefits as the previous example, the radically superior <laughs> management, ease of use, time savings, expandability, and uh, overall efficiency of the Drobo system, delivering both performance and capacity in a single system. So continue on here, I wanted to recap a little bit how Drobo is different. The high level pictures talk about the number of boxes. This slide uh, just reiterates that the configuration is 100% automatic. Thin reclamation automatically recovers capacity for the shared pool and you get performance and capacity. You can avoid having to do a lot of the cumbersome management tasks in the direct comparison with just the two systems. If you go to the three systems, you can eliminate a lot of those management sort of things because you make all the volumes go faster, but you're not doing it as efficiently and you're taking on complexity in terms of managing uh, all of the chassis and doing that in a small business really doesn't make a lot of sense. In fact, that example may not be practical to make, but I make it to illustrate that you need a lot more bowls of that particular type of storage to equal one bowl of the Drobo stuff with all the 
great automated tiering built in. So with that, there are some other features I want to make you aware of uh, before we wrap up this webcast that come with the B1200i when you upgrade to version 1.1.0. The headliner is support for Microsoft clustering and Hyper-V I mentioned at the top of the webcast. And uh, it's a new opportunity for using Drobo iSCSI SAN that didn't exist before. Uh, we have a lot of customers that are using it for Windows Server environments that are physical. They can't do the clustering. And if they're running Hyper-V, they, they can't do live migration between different Hyper-V hosts. Now that is something that's available in 1.1.0. Uh, which is an exciting thing for Drobo as we expand the types of solutions we can help our customers with. There's also support for Microsoft Data Protection Manager, specifically allowing for dynamic disks that's required by DPM. If you use it or are looking at it, that's something to consider. We've also made a lot of product enhancements to the performance in the hard drive only configuration. So while the SSDs do double your performance in an IO measurement, the performance of the hard drive only was improved from our initial release six months ago to uh, how we continue to evolve the product now. And we have some additional localized languages for folks around the world, uh, if that's applicable to you. Now I'm going to go through a couple frequently asked questions here and see if this will knock out a couple of the ones that are asked online. And we'll get to the rest of them at the end. Can I use a SATA drive with SSDs combined in the same B1200i? Yes, that's one of the great things about a Drobo. You can mix SAS and SSDs, or SAS and SATA together, and SSDs come in both types of interfaces. You can mix it all together. We just want you to follow drive recommendations uh, about the type of drives you use, enterprise-grade drives. Also, you're going to want to keep spindle speeds at least somewhat similar between your hard drives, so you don't have uh, big differences there. In terms of using 2.5-inch SSDs, the B1200i, like all Drobos, uses 3.5-inch drives. You can use those 2.5-inch drive models, as long as they're the enterprise grade models. You just have to have an adapter like an IC dock that would convert it from two and a half to three and a half. We'll have more information on the supported drives that we've tested, as well as more information on different drive adapters available closer to launch. Now, in terms of putting a configuration together where the B1200 is filled only with SSDs, would that make it go faster? And the answer is that we've optimized our system for both capacity and performance. So uh, it's not intended to be a high performance computing system specifically. It's intended to automate and double the performance uh, for transactions in a smaller organization's storage environment. So with that, you would not get a benefit of adding all SSDs to the system. You add a small number to provide the acceleration. Uh, and the last one is, can I add an SSD to a B1200i or do the SSDs have to be there from the beginning? And the answer is, of course, as long as you have the latest firmware, which is being released on April 25th, you'll be able to add SSDs. And upon adding either the second drive with single disk redundancy enabled, or if you have dual disk redundancy enabled, which is the default, uh, once you add the third SSD, the transactional tier will turn on and will immediately start to promote data to the transactional tier because we, even without the SSDs, measure the temperature and keep track of what we're going to accelerate if and when the uh, SSDs are added. So that's uh, some cool capabilities about a Drobo. Now in terms of the sizing guidelines, I mentioned it briefly at the top, the sizing guidelines remain the same as they have been with B1200i. It's a great storage solution for environments with 250 or fewer users. This is one way for us to characterize the type of performance environment you would want to put this particular product into. So not the trading for of a global stock exchange. Uh, there's lots of products that are uh, large scale for that. Drobo is great in those environments uh, because if you have the standard applications that most businesses might have with that number of users, you're going to be well within the means of what the product can support, even without the SSDs. By adding the SSDs, you get the acceleration. You can double your transactional workload and even triple your mixed workload uh, maximum IO performance, which is something that you need if you're doing things like virtualization or running some applications like Exchange or databases, which require more of those IOPS. Specific to Exchange, we are certified for 1,000 mailboxes if you dedicate the system just to Exchange, but most folks would probably use it as a VM and use it to host multiple applications. That's why we say 500 Exchange mailboxes along with your other applications would be a good fit, which makes that VMware Essentials Plus environment, two to three servers or even four ESX servers, a small number of physical and virtual, three to five servers, fits in quite nicely. But this is when we're talking about 100% used as tier one primary storage. That's why we're giving you the guidelines of 250 or fewer users. 
to be honest, most of the folks that use this product over the first six months of it, and at least most of the uh, interest we've had in and around this launch has been by much larger organizations. They're looking for a way to lower their cost of storage and move some of their tier two or tier three applications off their primary SAN. So with that, uh, you can be any sized environment as long as your IO requirements for your tier two or tier three primary storage match up nicely and would give you some, a lot of the same benefits that Drobo does in those smaller environments. And when it comes to disk space backup, Drobo is a fantastic solution and any size environment again would be a great fit there because it's not demanding from an IOS perspective, but rather just requires a more of an optimization around price capacity. So whether you're using your favorite backup application or the ones I'm listing here, which is just a subset of the ones that Drobo is known to work with, Veeam, Acronis, Symantec, we're certified with all of those, but with Apisure and Commvault and others also work great with a Drobo. If you're thinking about Drobo and the relative performance you get between the different models, our B1200i is twice that of our B800i in terms of streaming performance. A lot of that has to do with the fact we have additional ports, but also we do drive uh, higher throughputs there. And tra transactional performance is three times better than a B800i. Uh, application scalability, just the same. In terms of the adding SSDs, what you get is a, an additional doubling of your transactional IO performance and application scalability three times greater. So there are significant improvements that have been made to the system, but I also want you to know that these numbers and comparisons are based on improvements that have been made across the board, not just to the B1200i, but also the B800i. Really quick, I'm gonna recap with uh, some of the best use cases, primary storage, tier two, tier three I talked about. Disk-based backup is one where uh, we see a lot of folks looking for a storage that has these type of characteristics. Rich media storage as well, uh, it seems to me that it's causing a lot of constraints. We were just at the NAB show and a lot of people shooting 4K need a lot more storage uh, capacity. So that's something that Drobo can help out with. And dissimilar DR replication. Rather than talk about it here, I'm gonna talk about it on a future slide. For all these solutions I'm about to hit very quickly, we have a full set of assets, whether it's a solution brief uh, or a recorded webcast with myself and uh, guest expert from the industry or a detailed how-to guide on how to deploy it. We have all of that there for you for these solutions. This is a subset. Here are the th companies that we're working with to create these sort of solutions for SMBIT and look to have us deploy even more of those out in uh, webcasts uh, as part of our Drobo broadcast network series. VMware virtualization, I gave you the sizing before, is uh, a popular one, but we're also now adding Hyper-V virtualization and the need to provide a SAN to enable that failover live migration between two systems. Veeam backup and replication is a very popular product that we have now, and it's something where we have a promotion that was going on in Q1 and carrying on into Q2. If you buy a Drobo B1200i, you can get free Veeam software. So I'd encourage you to check out that uh, cool promo. If you have a mixed environment that's both physical and virtual servers, Acronis backup and uh, recovery could be a option for you because it can provide a backup solution for both. And where I wanted to point out one really interesting use case is using a Drobo as the target for dissimilar replication. There's a great new capability built into VMware 5 uh, called vSphere replication. It's controlled by Site Recovery Manager 5, which is something that came out after VMworld last year. It allows you to replicate between dissimilar storage devices and that allows you then to create a lower cost storage at your remote site. It's very good for folks who are interested in doing a DR solution. They're probably gonna fail over a subset of their applications to their other site. They're putting a very small amount of server infrastructure out at the other site. Drobo can be that cost effective and very easy to use storage on that remote site that allows you to use the site recovery manager to orchestrate a failover in the event of uh, an outage or a disaster at your primary site. And we do the same thing with double take availability, if, uh, which also works across physical servers, not just virtual servers. And we have a cool solution that we've put together with Amazon Web Services around cloud backup with their storage gateway virtual appliance. So all that sort of uh, stuff is available on our solution pages on our website. And if you wanted to talk to a live expert very interactively, you could join one of our live demo sessions that we have every single day. Uh, it's better than an evaluation, in my opinion, because you don't have to unbox equipment and hook it up with your stuff. We've got uh, virtual machines, applications, performance benchmarking tools that we can show you live over the web when you're participating in one of these demos. We can even give you control of the keyboard and mouse, and you can do some of the testing yourself on 
our equipment. And so it's a great interactive place for customers also to talk amongst themselves about requirements and learn more. And a great place to validate designs. So uh, I'd urge you to check out drobo.com slash live as a way of getting to storage experts, uh, myself and others that we have here at a corporate office in San Jose, California, to uh, engage more on these topics. Now, if you have something real quick, if you haven't checked our website out lately, uh, about 15 seconds after you go to one of our solution pages or one of our business pages, we'll pop up a little chat window where you can chat live with a Drobo expert, uh, not a college intern or somebody overseas. It's a real Drobo technical expert based at our corporate office that staffs this online chat. And if it's off hours, uh, you just send us email through the same interface and we can answer your questions that way. The reason we even talk about all this sort of stuff is that there is certainly a need for easy to use cost-effective storage, and as application performance requirements grow, the need to mix both capacity and performance into a single system. And these quotes come from Tech Validate, an independent research tool that is directly from the voice of a customer. Real customers entered in this information to derive these statistics that really help quantify why you spent the last half hour listening to a webcast from Drobo, because there are opportunities to have significant cost savings when using Drobo versus traditional SAN alternatives for the types of applications where Drobo is a great fit. And it's not an either or discussion. It really is an and discussion. We give you both performance and capacity in a single system with SSDs. We also complement your tier one storage with tier two storage from Drobo and in order to provide a great mix. And so if your other SAN isn't a Drobo, maybe you would consider that because of the stuff we talked about today and you wouldn't be alone. 72% of organizations that select Drobo are using technologies like Dell and HP that we compared to before.